Hello and welcome again. So now today we are moving forward. We are on page 140 USMLE step 1 2021 microbiological section where we have previously discussed about the gram positive uh, cocci, bacilli and, and in the previous we have talked about this um, <clears throat> this um, mycobacterium leprae. So now we will be continue our lecture to this gram negative lab algorithm and that is gram negative cocci and bacilli. Previously we have talked about that gram stain procedure and then we also have discussed about that they are gram positive cocci all cocci will be gram positive except few that like Nigeria gonorrhea, Nigeria meningitis and Morexola and all bacilli are gram negative except few which we have talked about this listeria coronobacterium diphtheria then uh, mycobacterium okay so those were the only few nocardia these were the only few gram positive bacteria that are bacilli mainly all other are the bacilli will be gram negative only so let's uh, let me take you to the uh, procedure uh, if you see over here the gram stain so the, you can see in the gram stain this is a differential stain in which at the end of the procedure two different color of, of the organism is seen so initially both organism are colorless we start with the step one we put where we put the crystal boiled color so they will uh, both bacteria both group of bacteria will be crystal boiled then we add iodine to it and then it becomes complex and after that when we decolorize with the acid or alcohol or uh, acid alcohol then gram positive bacteria retain its primary color that is the crystal violet color purple color blue color but the gram negative bacteria or the group of bacteria that loses its color it becomes our gram negative actually now at the fourth stage we do the counter stain and on counter stain what we found that we found a group of bacteria becomes uh, remain the purple or blue in color whereas another group of bacteria appear as the pink in color and this pink color organism known as the gram negative bacteria where the organism which retain the primary color is known as the gram positive bacteria you can see over here so you can easily see over here this is the purple or blue blue color organism and these are the gram positive so you should always remember this image because you have to understand in usml you may get and any board exam they may might give you this picture and say okay then they will make a scenario and ask you a question so you have to understand they are they are giving the blue color this means a gram positive bacteria if they are giving you a pink or red color organism then you have to understand they are talking about the gram negative bacteria so you have understand our gram stain then come to our previous our own <coughs> book usmle step 1 2021 microbiology where we are talking about the gram negative bacteria so we have talked that gram negative bacteria many are bacilli only few are cocci now in coccus there are what are the organism normally nigeria group that has nigeria gonorrhea and nigeria meningitis and another group is morexella so only two group of organism you have to remember very easy to remember and they are actually have medical point of importance mainly nigeria group okay so how we can differentiate it hmm. and other cocci except nigeria and morella morexella other are bacilli so bacilli are there are tons of bacteria in bacilli among which there are, they have divided the bacilli in a different group as well like some are coco bacilli they are bacilli but their structure are uh, slightly smaller their length and breadth are almost equal so they are called the coco bacilli there are true bacilli which actually resemble you can see the bacilli the organism is cylindrical and there are few bacilli which is carved in nature we'll come to it first let's deal with the cocci so gram positive gram negative cocci are only few and they are Nigeria gonorrhea, Nigeria meningitis and Morexella. How can we remember? They both are diplococci, they are aerobic organism and we can differentiate between Nigeria meningitis and Nigeria gonorrhea by one of the glucose fermentation test that is known as the maltose. How can we remember that? Maltose is fermented by Nigeria meningitis that is Amporium. So it is easy to remember. Both bacteria gonorrhea as well as meningitis they both ferment, ferment glucose but maltose only nigeria meningitis can ferment so we can differentiate nigeria gonorrhea and morexella from nigeria meningitis by a test known as the maltose fermentation 
So which which bacteria is can mal form in maltose? Obviously, Neisseria meningitis. Which doesn't? Neisseria gonorrhea, Morexella. They both can form in glucose. Yes. So differentiation point is this maltose fermentation, and we know Neisseria meningitis will cause meningitis, and Neisseria gonorrhea will cause gonorrhea. We'll talk in subsequent lecture. Now let's come back to the bacilli group, which is the larger group. We have already told you. If you remember the bacilli, then you have to think, okay, they are, must be in gram-negative tree. They must be under gram-negative umbrella. Only few are few cocci are there for gram-negative. All are bacilli. Among bacilli also, they have divided into cocco bacilli, true bacilli, and curve rods. Why, why they are called cocco bacilli? Because they are, they are bacilli, they are cylindrical, but their length and breadth becomes so, almost same and looks like a cocci. So they are known as the cocco bacilli. The example are Haemophilus influenzae, Bordetella pertussis, Pasturella, Brucella, Francisella, Tolerances, and Acinobacter baumani. Among this, among them, four are actually you can easily remember because they are all the Ella sister, like Broad, Bordetella, Pasturella, Brucella, Francisella. So these are Ella sister. It is easy to remember. And another is Haemophilus influenzae and Acinobacter baumani. These are also Cucubacillae. Moving to the curve rod, curve rods actually they are also the bacilli, but there are three curve rods that have medically important. They are Campylobacter jejunum, Vibrio choleri causing cholera, Campylobacter jejunic cause gastroenteritis, gastroenteritis, and there is the Helicobacter pylori which causes peptic ulcer disease. Among them also, they can be also be differentiated by a point like they are the curve rods. So on morphology, we found this organism are curved. We can see of their structure. They all are oxidase positive, but they can differentiate it from one another by a simple point like Campylobacter jejunum will grow in 42 degrees Celsius. So, neither Vibrio cholerae, neither Helicobacter pylori will grow at 42 degrees Celsius. They all will grow at 37 degrees Celsius, but this is only the bacteria. They will grow at little higher temperature. So, other will die, this will grow. So, we increase the temperature of your incubator and incubate this organism if it is growing this Campylobacter jejuni other organism will not grow coming back coming to the point of vibrio cholerae these are the organism that cause cholera it gives a shooting motility you can see in the hanging drop preparation and these are responsible for a cholera outbreak and they are usually grow in the alkaline media so they can easily grow in the alkaline peptone water but Campylobacter jejuni and Helicobacter bilori doesn't grow there. So that is the differential point. Now comes to the Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori is very difficult to grow. So they are not easily grown like this. Campylobacter jejuni and Vibrio cholerae. And they have a special enzyme produced is called urease. They are rapid urease producer. They can, urease test will be positive within a second, within a few minutes. So that is so much high urease positive. And why they are urease positive? Because no other organism in your stomach pH will survive. Your stomach pH is 2.5, but at that pH, no organism survive. Only Helicobacter pylori does. How? By producing the enzyme urease. What urease you will do? Urease, this will break down the urea and convert into the ammonia. Uh, ammonia. Then ammonia brings alkaline environment around it. And so it is continuously maintaining the alkaline environment around surrounding the uh, the bacteria and by which it can it, the acid doesn't go to the bacteria the surrounding always remain alkaline and despite of the low ps that is 2.5 it does that ps doesn't kill the helicobacter pylori and see, hence only helicobacter pylori is only the organism that is found in your stomach and they cause peptic ulcer disease and eventually carcinoma now let's come to the bacilli the true bacilli the true bacilli are the organism the medically important are salmonella protea sigella yersinia pseudomonas burkholderia e coli klebsiella enterobacter cytobacter and serasia so these are the gram negative true bacilli okay now talking about them how to remember them and how can we differentiate between them that is also very important so this all organism e coli klebsiella enterobacter cytobacter serasia pseudomonas burkholderia salmonella protea sigella and yersinia they all are gram negative bacilli now how we can differentiate from each other by a test known as the lactose fermenter the lactose is a uh, form of carbohydrate that ferment we can put in the mccunky agar where certain organism 
utilize the lactose and produce the acid and after changing acid the medium the media ph will be changed and since there will be a change in the pm the indicator is there which changes the color into the pink color so organism which can ferment lactose are pink in color in a McConkey agar and those pink organism are e coli klebsiella enterobacter cytobacter and seracea among them also we can differentiate with the fast and slow lactose fermenter the first lactose fermenter are E. coli, Klebsiella and Introbacter. What does it mean that? This has the capacity to utilize lactose rapidly. Because of that, what happened? The acid produced in tremendous amount and the bacteria become pinks when you observe after 14 to 16 hours. Whereas the Cytobacter and Seracea at 16 or 18 hours still remain pale and they slowly ferment the lactose and later on 24 hours or 48 hours they become pink in color. So they are slow lactose fermenter. This is rapid lactose fermenter. We can differentiate everyone into this. There are certain group of organism that will remain colorless, that will remain pale in the Maconchia agar, despite the presence of lactose. Because they cannot ferment lactose. Since they cannot ferment the lactose, they will not change the, uh, they will not produce the acid, they will not pursue the large amount of the acid, they will, the media uh, pH will not change, so the indicator will not necessarily change, and they remain white in color, pale in color. So, the organism which produce pink are E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Cytobacter, Cyrasia, different group. The organism which is pale or remain colorless are the Pseudomonas, Burkhalteria, Salmonella, Proteus, Sigella, and Yersinia. Among them also, these are the pale colony. You grow on the Macangiagar, the Macangiagar, they say the pale colony or white colony, they are colorless. So, this organism you have to think in the mind. Even among these organisms also we need to differentiate because only one organism is going to cause you infection. It might be any infection, it may be wound infection, it may be uh, gastroenteritis, it may be blood infection. They are always you have to think for one bacteria. Only in the rare case we can th think of polymicrobial infection. Very rare scenario. All the time you have to think about the one organism. So you have to point at risk to the one organism identification. So, you have grown, taken the sample, you have grown in the Macanchia agar, they become colorless, they have not eaten the pink. If they are pink, you have to think this five organism. They are colorless, then we have to think this organism. So, what are the organisms? Pseudomonas, Burkholderia, Salmonella, Protea, Sigella, and Yersinia. Now, how can you differentiate among them also? So, we will do a, another test known as the oxidase. The oxidase test will be positive in case of Pseudomonas and Burkholderia. So, when you pick up the pale, pale colony, you put on the oxidase dicks. It will immediately change the color. After changing the color, you will understand, okay, this is oxidase positive. So, it belongs to the pseudomonas group. You are, now, you are now reaching to your diagnosis. If it is oxidase negative, then you have to think, okay, this is oxidase negative. Means this is not belongs to the pseudomonas. Burkholderia is also one of the previous member of pseudomonas group. Okay. So, you will think, okay, they are not now pseudomonas group. They are Salmonella, Sigella, Proteus or Proteus of Yersinia. How can we further differentiate among them? We will do another test known as the H2S production and a TSI agar, triple sugar agar that is. Okay. So what happened in that they will produce this H2S. H2S production will be indicated as a black gas. So those organism in the TSI agar if shows the black gas then we will call them as a salmonella or proteus species. So you can narrow down back to the salmonella and proteus. If they are not producing S2S in TS agar, then we will think of Sigella and Yersinia. And again, if they are S2S production, then Salmonella and Proteus, and we will do further testing like Proteus as the, um, they have, they can move fast, their movement is fast, okay, they have swarming growth, so we can differentiate between Proteus and Salmonella, when we can differentiate between Sigella and Yersinia by a different test. So. In a not cell, you have to remember a gram negative pink bacilli. There are the cocci, they belong to Nigeria and many good Moraxella groups. There are the cocci, coccus are hemo coco bacilli, hemophilus, boretella, parsitella, brucella, francis, acinobacter, cough reds were oxidase positive, campylobacter, vibrio coli, and acylo, helicobacter pylori, and they can be differentiated. Also, we have a bacilli that can differentiate on the basis of the lactose fermenter, which we do in the McConkey agar. And the pink, the colony that will grow pink, we think of E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter mainly, and then 
cyto late pink developer developer are cytobacter and cerasia if they are pale colony colorless colony we will think of the pseudomonas burkholderia salmonella proteus sigel and yersinia and among them also we can differentiate by oxidase test we differentiate salmonella from the others then other group of organism can also be further differentiated by a test called s2s production and ts agar and which salmonella and proteus will produce s2s whereas sigel and yersinia will not in this way we can remember all this gram negative bacteria the gram negative bacteria are very much medically important and we need to know all the disease provided by each bacteria subsequently in a subsequent lecture if you have any question please comment in the link below i'll try to answer it and get back to you thank you the important test and are in the bold and important pathogen are in the bold italic and that is important and they have pleomorphic rod or cocomacillae they are talking about this some are there have the Yersinia, which has a polymorphic lord or cocobacilli. So in a nutshell, this is very important uh, lecture where you have to remember all the organisms that are medically important of gram-negative bacteria. Thank you again.